Hi, welcome. Great to have you here. I'm interviewing Les Carlson. <laughs> That's right, and I'm happy you are, Brian. You know, <laughs> let, let, Les kind of replaced me because I was dying, and, you know, a lot of people would think that's cruel, but, you know, Les has a career, too, and God bless his soul. He just moved right in for the kill, and... Uh, and here I am. Uh, let's forget all I'm that. actually okay, hosting the show. <laughs> and and He's now... He's dancing on my grave! <laughs> but, Brian, but Brian still likes me. I After all you. that... I love yeah, you. He loves me, and um, and it's Brian Healy, mm -hmm. and it's Mark. And Mark, what is your last name? Planger. It's Planger. A Planger. Yeah. It's a Flange. It's French. French. Yeah, yes. Don't even try Planger. to spell it. <laughs> that's that's why I didn't know it. Yes. Yeah, but French. I've got and and Mr. Planger, you yes. play keyboards. Yes. Keyboards. Yes. And you guys are in a group called Dead Artist Syndrome. That's right, and we're here on Frontline. Rewind. Oh, it's still Frontline Rewind? Cool. I got. I thought I got shafted out of that. No, I think that was your idea, and we just ran with it. I know. I just, you know, I mean, Adele just ran with all the money and just kicked me to the car. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And she bought these mics. She just said, you know, Fatso's dying, and we've got to keep the show going. This is pretty entertaining. So what do you think so far, Mark? Uh, I've enjoyed my short ride with them so far. Yeah. Uh, Brian asked me to join in 2011 when we uh, opened up for Daniel Amos. Okay. And then since then, it's just been uh, sporadic album recording, trying to get it done. And now we get to do this great show. It's done. And you have a, a current record. Yes. Right now. Yes, and Mark will tell you the title. It's called... <laughs> Kissing Strangers. <laughs> I like it. Exactly. I do Thank you. Effects. That's why. They well, we were going to call ourselves Blood Good, but then we found out you already kind of had that gig down. We had that down. We've, but know, I figured if we went to places you children. didn't, no one would know. Hence, Other than the fact that we look nothing like you and are bald as eggs. But we could have been a hair band if we had hair. Well, you do, but it's on the inside. Yes. Yes. Well, I, no, I've got it on my back. It's just a <laughs> heck of a comb over. Well. well. I'd like to do a commercial right now if anybody's watching. <laughs> You're listening to Frontline Records Rewind. Rewind. We'll Rewind. be back right after this. Rewind. All right, so all this music is available on FrontlineRecords.us, Amazon, iTunes, and Spotify. All of them. They're streaming in the in the songs that you've written. What what is to you? What is the you know your one of the more favorite lyrical and melodic? Tunes that you went, you know what? I the so, really one of the songs on Happy Hour, yeah. especially that I'm most proud of, uh, is a song called Bride Song. I'd read a survey by the uh, there's a really great Christian polling company, and they had done this survey saying, Who in your life would you most like to emulate? And it wasn't a Christian survey, it was a general survey to the mass populace, mm -hmm. uh, sort of a, uh, you know, Lear at War, Carl Rovey kind of thing. Uh, and the question was, who would you like to spend time with? And, the, and who do you think is the greatest person in the history of mankind? The answer was Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And then the next question, then there was another question on the same survey that said, who are the last people you would ever want to be trapped on a desert island with? And the answer was Christians. So I came up with this twisted metaphor in my mind uh, where I wrote this song called Bride Song and the chorus is, Jesus, I love you, but I don't understand your wife. <laughs> and, and it's about how people love God, they love church, they're interested in per, you know uh, spirituality, but they just cannot stand being beaten up by Christians uh, because at one point it says, every time I turn my back, she's waiting with a knife and how she's always burning bridges and even one she's on. Yeah. And um, I actually have gotten a couple um, uh, cu couple uh, theses from colleges on the song and it's just like, did you really overthink this because I <laughs> yeah, I did not think this far into it. It's like, I don't want to burst your bubble but I just thought it was a really good metaphor. Yeah. So yeah, it's called Bride Song and uh, it's off happy hour. Yeah, and here it is.
Bride Song.
Hey, and that was Bright Sun by, by Dead Artist Syndrome. You're listening to Frontline Records Rewind. I'm the Dead Guy. Welcome back, your host, Les Carlson. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh. No, I love that. But I, that, that's, um, uh, that is a very interesting thought. I've never really... You know, I've never really kind of looked at it that way, but it's such a... Well, Les, you are in a metal band. I mean, yeah, I don't, why know, should I'm I not look? looking for you for thoughts. And why should I look at it? <laughs> what are you looking for yeah, in a metal I'm not, band? I'm not... Yeah, what, like, what are you, what dude, are you saying? Dude, dude. Have you heard? Dude, I, I've, I've... Have I've you met, heard the lyrics? Dude, I've heard? met your bass player. The guy's not bringing the potato salad to the men's uh, picnic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Do not he put is that kidding. in. He actually, is such. He is one of the nicest guys in the world. Actually, uh, yeah, he's a nice guy and he's highly intelligent. Really? Boys? And he's read all your books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys get each other when it comes to that. Yeah. 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 No, we deal. always got each other. We, I don't even remember how we met up, but somehow we at met. Well, I know we, we met. I know. Yeah, we met at Cornerstone. Uh, we kept in contact a little bit right. after and eventually lost track of each other. And Completely. Then, then you bring in the miracle of Facebook. I've yeah. moved back to California. Mm-hmm. That's made a big difference. I huh? sign up on Facebook and I find out he lives like two miles from me. Well, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> there you know, he is. You know, and the wow. other thing that was fascinating about Mark is this was the age when everyone was doing MIDI. And Mark's doing what everyone does MIDI live. <laughs> I was sort oh, of an wow. electronic one-man band. You yeah, know? he was electronic. <laughs> he had, he had, he had, I'm going to play this over here, he but now had I'm gonna, every... I have to program this while this is going off. And <laughs> Yeah, he had every piece of That's cool. economic gear that he made sound so freaking good. And I was stunned because it wasn't Teletras, I realized. Old this, cheap stuff. Right. This wasn't MIDI. This was some kid who had just started doing kid. <laughs> anyway. He uh, had a four-track plastic. <laughs> right. And he, started, and he started doing this stuff by himself. And I was fascinated. I didn't start out to do this. I just had a bunch of friends, and I did a demo. Mm-hmm. And somehow it got in the hands of some distributor, and they said, you know, do two more songs, and we'll buy 10,000 units. Wow. And it's like, I spent years managing bands, and it's this easy. I managed bands. Who were the bands Christian, you managed? We, we Undercover, have... Lifesavers, Mike Knott, Boys Club. Wow. Uh, this... uh, a lot of people here tonight. A lot, yeah, a lot of people here tonight. And, and uh, Bombay Babies, briefly. Um uh, what else? LSU, I guess, would be another knot. Just about uh, most of the incarnations of knot, I, 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 I had some hand in, and he'd hire and fire me every other week. So, mm-hmm. so that that became a pattern. Uh, but Facebook shows up, like Mark said, and I had always been a really good fan of Rick Albus ever since I had seen him with Undercover, and. I find out he's, you know, not doing anything, and it's just like... So basically, this incarnation that did Kissing Strangers was created on Facebook. Yeah. When we, we played in 2011, he introduced us as the band that Facebook built. Yeah. Oh, we're yeah. The band, we are literally the band that Facebook built. I knew Ojo and Jim. They were on That's my first cool. record. I remembered Mark from Cornerstone, and I think we exchanged a couple phone calls, and yeah. then I realized he was probably a loser and ditched him, because I was <laughs> famous. No, uh, no, I just think we just, we lost touch, as yeah. it is, you know, but that said, I feel close to Mark, because it's like he, that whole fanzine scene, uh-huh. he was, I could find out about Mark all the time. He might have lost track of me. I knew what Mark was up to. And, and Facebook shows up, and it's like, yeah, we just start contacting each other. And next thing I know, I've got Rick, Joe, Mark, um, Jim. Who else is in the band? Oh, well, Sean's always, Sean Doty's always been in DAS. Sean uh-huh. Doty was in DAS from uh, the second record on. You know that that's just Ricky Sean. Michelle. Sean Doty from Vale Ricky of Ashes, Michelle, and then oh well, and then I've always DAS. known, and I've always known Ricky Michelle, and she's always played on everyone else, all of my other friends' albums. So I brought Ricky in to do some things. So she's sort of like the unofficial total guy in the band <laughs> because she's hot, pretty, and smart, and she can probably kick our butts if she uh, wanted to. It sounds like you've got a pretty incredible community of of uh, artists that just enjoy being creative together. Well, that, like I said, that's the fun of it. It, it. It's like when I have Mike Rowe 
play with me. I mean, I did an, I like Happy Hour, uh, which you're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. I did that record with the 77s yeah. because I was friends with Mike. I was friends with Dave Linhart. I was friends with Mark Harmon. And it was just like, well, hey, kids, let's do a record. And the best part is I get to draw them and get them to do something they can never do in their band. You know, um, on the first album, Prince of Darkness, I had a guy named Chris Harvey, who was a rockabilly guitarist, lay down a goth guitar solo. Oh, and, wow. it's, and, and people today come up to me saying, that is just the most incredible guitar solo. And it's just like, yeah, the guy plays rockabilly. He didn't know what he was doing. He had no presuppositions. So mm-hmm. he just went, went mm-hmm. with what he had, so and it worked. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and the thing is, is, is the whole theme of DAS is capturing lightning in a bottle. Mm-hmm. Those magic audio photographs of things that just are not supposed to happen, yeah. but do. And that's why everybody loves it, right? I mean, this, you know, I'm, it, it I'm does sure something. I can it tell you right now, there is not a doubt in my mind in this whole world of billions of people i have got 187 of the most solid das fans in the world and i love y'all and and we're on the radio (laughs) and we're on the radio yeah and i want to hear some stuff okay what do you want to hear i want to hear i want to hear uh sweet young and dead (laughs) oh it's young sexy and dead come on let's fake it for god's sakes i didn't call your band lamb's blood (laughs) <laughs> don't edit that yeah. leave it in there because you know let me get a breath here <laughs> yeah it's all right. yeah so I like that song I'm so embarrassed that I messed up the the uh, the song why so straighten it out will you? dude I sing the song and I mess it up all the time <laughs> I'm really not embarrassed okay interesting story the come song, on I want to know about the it. song is called young sexy, sexy and, and dead. dead the trouble is At the time, Frontline Records was extremely skittish. So on the back of the album, it says, YSD. But now you know, it's young, sexy, and dead. Here's Dead Artist Syndrome.
gotta be careful what games you play Everybody else will lie and justify you Drinking, being married for tomorrow you die You're young, sexy and dead Young, sexy and dead Awesome. <laughs> now, that song, I only listened to it That a is few so times, weird. I've never listen. introduced myself. <laughs> That's good. That's good. And it was nice. It had that big bass radio voice. Mm. Um, what is that song about when you say young, sexy, and dead? Was, was, was that me? Well, live fast, die young, and leave a good looking corpse. Oh, by the way, you're still dead. <laughs> it's pretty okay. much the theme behind okay. the song. So in other words, but the message, if there's a Christian message is, the you're young, Christ- sexy, but you're dead. Right, you're so still you're young dead. and your sex didn't Eat, save drink, you. Eat, drink, be merry, tomorrow you die. Yeah. You know, it's like, that's a great plan, but you're still dead. dead. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. so that's kind of the theme behind that one. I mean, uh, I don't think it's a great masterwork or anything. Not like all my other stuff. No, uh, I don't. I don't think it's a thing. But it, but it is fun. I, I will say there is something thrilling. Uh, getting a bunch of kids chanting the chorus at a Bible college, and watching the powers that be go. How do we expel them all? Mm-hmm. You know, because I mean, you just you just young, sexy, and dead is just not a praise chorus. Okay. You know, you just you it. just you just can't work that. But in. it did catch my ear. You know, uh, I was. And I thought you had he's a big got earring a, on. No, I did. Just okay. on the right. We're ready for yeah. JS Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh I gotta well, go. Hey. Hey, we, we'll be back after this, but Dead Artist Cinder is gonna do a challenge check, so don't touch that dial. Yeah. You know, Frontline Rewind is actually we have broadcast partners. We're, oh, you yeah. know that. Yeah. Yes, and they're all over the place, internet and and, and analog radio, as we say. And so this show can be heard on the radio. And also mm-hmm. then a podcast of it, we call it a podcast, right, on yeah. iTunes. Uh-huh. Go to iTunes podcast. And then on FrontlineRecords.us. Yes, and of course I knew all that. I, I know. I just forgot. Well, <laughs> we're just reminding the listeners. Oh, well, I have a good memory, but it's short. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then, of course, the music that we play on the Rewind show can be found on... FrontlineRecords.us. There it is. iTunes. FrontlineRecords.us. Yep iTunes. Amazon. Amazon. Really? Spotify? Is it there? Oh, yes. Wow. E-music. It's really everywhere that plays digital music, whether stream or download. Yes. You can find this music. And that's the thing that's happening these days. It is. It's the streaming world. It's, it's a new world, and here we are. Yes. Okay, hey, listen, I'm Les Carlson, and I'm here with Rick Alba, former bass player from Alter Boys. And uh, Rick, what is this song that we're going to hear now? Um, well, let's start with a song called Where's the New World from an album uh, Against the Grain, okay. 1980-something. Um, <laughs> they should know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about this song is because, uh, is because of all the songs that, uh, that I enjoyed playing, um, just because of my own contributions to it, uh, it was just it was just so much fun to play live. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of a patriotic song. I wanted to um, uh, some of the things that were starting to happen politically uh, that I was a little bit concerned about and would still be concerned about today mm-hmm. uh, is um, uh, well, there were news stories about um, about a kid who brought a Bible to school and got in trouble for it. There was a news story about a kid who brought a uh, a Christmas card uh, oh. to school uh, with Jesus on it and oh. got in trouble for that. 
Oh, yeah. So I reacted furiously and wrote a song called Where's the New World about how America... Uh, you know, has uh, you know, you know, it has become anti-Christian, and you know, Christians are in trouble here now. And it was supposed to be a Christian country, and all this stuff. Uh, I and um, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about it was to correct some mistakes I made. Uh, the um, one of the lyrics is "In God We Trust" was the cry of the nation. The the Revolutionary War, you know, the War for Independence had just okay. happened, and and we decided that "In God We Trust" was going to be the cry of the nation. Um, I didn't learn until much later uh, that "In God We Trust" didn't come didn't come until much much after than that, and it wasn't even printed on the money until the 1950s. Not to make an issue of any of that, but it's just <laughs> when they asked me what songs to talk about, I thought, you know what, I need to clear up so something. So you want to clarify that? I want to clarify. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that. And, and, it, and also because I love, love, love the song. With the exception, I have to say, um, there, was some, there was some noise after the album came out uh, in the press that, uh, that the production team had overdone it with the keyboards uh, at the end of that song. Mm-hmm. And I just, wanted to, I just always felt kind of bad about that because that was all my idea. It was my fault that, that – so if you – feel free to pick the needle up or fast forward or jump to the next song or something when you're listening to that. You don't really have to listen to all that big, long keyboard thing okay, at the end. Okay, but let's put that in perspective. <laughs> this is somebody that made a review, and it was only his opinion. So have a nice well, day. I, I, I a couple, I mean, cause a I heard couple it too, of people, and I didn't think it was all that bad. And I uh, thought it was a good idea. Well, thank you. I've listened. To, I listened to it recently, and it, and I just I pushed the next button. <laughs> so, Rick, do us the honor and give us the title. Where's the new world by the Altar Boys? Here it is. Down no more. 
Okay, uh, the human sound. <laughs> that could be a lot of things. Uh-huh. Yeah, the human sound. You know, I wrote that in a time in my life when I was uh, just starting to question, um, well, not my faith, but just question my, just kind of my place in the world. You know, I, it, it, almost, I think I hit midlife crisis at the age of 25, well, the age of 27, maybe, especially when I started losing my hair. That yeah, always well, that initiates was, was the mid midlife mid. crisis. Mid to, you know, yeah, 25. I know. That's in the, right in, in the middle. In the middle of, yeah, in the middle of the first half of my <laughs> life. Uh, he, um, uh, but, uh, and, uh, just starting to just kind of realize that, um, that even though, even though I believed, you know, f- firmly that, uh, that, that Jesus had all the answers, I had more questions than I ever thought that I could have, you know, mm-hmm. I, um, and, and so there was just all of this sort of tension inside that I, dared not express and uh so sort of the 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 um the metaphor in the song is that is you know standing in a in a room full of people all by myself um you know and then realizing that we're all in this room and we're all in a way here all alone if we're not really expressing ourselves you know um uh the uh, uh just sort of uh, building this this wall this protective wall you know or 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 shield around us uh to uh to um to to to, to you know just protect ourselves from being misunderstood maybe um you know like if i if, if i say what i want to say people are going to get the wrong idea you know so you know but but it's really what i'm what i'm feeling inside and i need help understanding it you know there was i i i needed help understanding what was going on and there wasn't anybody you know in my life it it seemed except for jesus who could help me understand and he hadn't been seen in person you know for 2000 years <laughs> so uh so you know where where was i going to go uh, and it just uh, all of that inner turmoil just becomes just so much noise that just comes out in a in a scream, uh, and so that was you know that was that song is the human sound just a scream? The human sound, altar boys. Just to themselves 
they all want the last word Cause they can't say what they mean All right, so all this music is available on FrontlineRecords.us, Amazon, iTunes, and Spotify. All of them. They're streaming. Hi, I'm Les Carlson, and uh, I'm with Michael Rowe. You prefer Michael? Well, yeah, nowadays, because of that other guy, you know, the Dirty Jobs guy. Oh, okay. I had a great name. It was a great stage name. And then all of a People sudden... People thought it was a fake name. I had to explain that it wasn't. Yeah. And now... It's Michael. Okay, so now it's Michael Rowe. And, yeah. you know, a famous group, the 77s. Well, famous? Famous in the sense that, hey, when somebody mentions Christian music, of, you know, of that era, and the 77s definitely comes up. How many albums do you actually have, Michael? I don't know. Um, Let's try and, yeah, you 12, got 10 20, fingers. I would say about between 12 and 20. Okay. Somewhere in there, because there's a lot of compilations, live records, yeah. things like that. So That sort of thing. But as far as studio records, maybe 10 or 11 or 12, something like that. Okay. Not and, sure. And you're the lead singer, kind of the yeah. personality guy up front. Do you write a lot of the lyrics, all the lyrics? Uh, not all, but I write many. Um, I've been associated with a lot of great writers, both in my band and other bands I've worked with, so... I tend to get a lot of credit for a lot of great songs that I didn't write myself. But you were in on them. Well, I think I was a, more of an interpreter of the songs, and hopefully, you know, if I can lend a voice to a great song, that you start owning it on your own because yeah. you've given life to the song. So, I, you know, I'm spoiled in that way because I know a lot of great songwriters. So give me some of the... Uh, mention one, at least. One well, of the songs uh, that in 77s, about. we had... Early on, we had Mark Tootle, who was our keyboard player. He was just a genius writer. And then later, we started collaborating. When, when the group changed, uh, now it's a three-piece with Mark Harmon and Bruce Spencer. And both of those guys are also great writers. Um, Is this a current album that you just did with those guys? We did some tracks for a project I had, yeah. Okay, is there a title to that? It's called Give Me a Kickstart and a Phrase or Two. That's a lyric by Charlie Peacock. I and it like was that. a Kickstarter campaign that I had, and one of the rewards was uh, hiring me to do covers. Okay. And so all these people submitted all these covers, and uh, so many of them were rock and roll songs that I, you know, I wanted to just sit around in my underwear and just record, you know, acoustic and just right. do it quick, and that didn't happen. I ended up turning it into a real record. And so... I asked Mark and Bruce, the 77s, to help me on some of them, so they jumped in, and we ended up making kind of a half-solo, half-band project, and it's really cool. I'm really happy with it. Yeah. Even though it's not our music, uh, we put ourselves into it, so. All right. Um, from, the, from the 77 y years, you know, that, yeah. when that, that band was put together, how, how did that come about? Uh, we were part of a church in Sacramento called Warehouse oh, Ministries. Really? And a yeah. lot of, they had a lot of what we call CCM artists coming through there all through the 70s and 80s. We played there. Oh, Blood, yeah. Blood yeah. Good played yeah, there. Yeah, almost warehouse. everybody has. Yeah. You know? And uh, at some point, they wanted to be able to advertise to the local schools what was going on so they could get kids to come out to these shows. And so they thought of putting together a group of uh, musicians that went to the church 
we just throw a group together and uh, from scratch. So uh-huh. we call ourselves a scratch band. And for about four years, we went around playing every high school, every college, every youth authority, uh, federal prison. Wow. We'd play out on lawns at lunchtime and people would throw eggs and water balloons at us. Whatever we could do to get people to know about these concerts. Mm-hmm. And uh, after about four years of doing that, we decided that we should go legit and make a record and, you know... So the rest is history from there. But it really was born out of a local ministry doing rock music. Yeah. And and actually, you were laying the groundwork there for the group's popularity and didn't really realize it, right? No. Just in, the, in the Well, that's true. Especially in California, there. that's true. Because yeah. we played around, you know, Southern Cal and, and uh, Fresno and all over the place. So by the time we became the 77s, we had enough of a following we could build on. So it did... It wasn't all for naught, and those years were good years because we saw a lot of really amazing things that happened in the spiritual realm. Yeah, so you did shows at the warehouse. Oh, yeah, and that, all the time. they were packed, I, They I were imagine. packed, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of energy. And- oh, yeah. Well, it was a really rowdy group because at that time, punk music and new wave, uh, all of that stuff was so energetic, you know, and... Uh, I had to really be on steroids all the time musically, but that gave the group a lot of energy that we may not have had normally, you know, so uh, it helped to put a lot of vim and vigor into our shows at the time. Yes. So uh, favorite song off of, uh, out of those 12 to 20 albums? Uh, favorite, gosh. Not just one song, you know, throw... Three or four out there. I don't there. know. The um, ones that come to well, mind. Well, they're, they're all different eras, you know. Um, in the early days, I liked uh, Ba, 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 I guess, that I wrote with a friend. How do you spell that? It's B-A, B-A. I see. It, I, it was called Utah. It was about Mormons. And I, I thought maybe I should make this a little bit more general <laughs> because I didn't want to just target Mormons and make a big stink out of that. I wanted it to be about something larger than just that. So... Uh, I changed it to Baba, and uh, we got a lot of airplay on that one. So we we want to we want to listen to it. You should play that one. Okay, here it is. Baba, 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 Baba. i 
Wow, that was uh, yeah, we got through <laughs> that, that was Baba. We got through that by the seventy sevens. I'm here with the lead singer Michael Rowe, who used I, to be uh, used to be Mike, but yeah, he, can't not, be Mike Rowe he, anymore. He's not going there anymore. So. And he doesn't even spell it right. Oh man, that's that's weird. So weak. I know. But anyway, so we're back. Uh, how many years have you been in this business? I mean, well, I don't know. Is that fair to ask? <laughs> Not really, years. but I asked well, it I, anyway. My first band, I was I was 15. Yeah, me too. And I'm 60 now, so let's figure wow. that out. How many years would that be? You can't be 60. You look really fresh. That's 45 years of, Dude. of, of nonstop rocking. Well, maybe that's what keeps you so young, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, you look fresh, man. You, you're, are you still energetic? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> Do you have to fake it now? I have to force it, yeah. Hey, force it? Well, you got to start running, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Um, if I'm playing with a rock band on stage, I'll get energetic. It just does it to you. Right? Yeah, because the music is energetic. Yeah. Fire it up. Tell me about some of these songs. Like, you know, pick one that you love. Tell well, us about it. From the latter day 77s, the more recent incarnation, there's a song called Unbalanced. And it's in 7 8 time. And uh, it reminds me of when your washing machine, you know, when all the clothes get out of round and then it starts, <laughs> starts you know, motorboating and then the lo- that word unbalanced comes on. Yeah, yeah. And I, when I heard the repetitive riff in 7-8, I thought, that reminds me of that washing machine. So uh, I wrote a song about things that are out of balance and at least whatever was in my life at that point. And I think it's a real tour de force for our group because uh, it has the bluesy stuff, the rock stuff, and also there's beautiful, even a little bit of surf music. Wow. The 77s. Unbalanced. I come with lines, you talk in circles. I own the blues, you rent the color purple. For one, you do your life, baby. I do my time.
I show it. Yeah, show it, don't blow it. Unbalanced, okay. Yeah. Did you ever uh, fix that washing machine? <laughs> it wasn't mine. Oh, okay. So you were just... Just in anyway, the laundry room. Did you guys hear that in the tune? Because I kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how many years? Uh, the 77s, um, like... Uh, it started in 1979. How many original guys or... Uh, me. You're the original <laughs> yeah. guy. Yeah. Uh, the group we have now, the trio, has been together since maybe 1995, so almost 20 years. Wow. And, uh, well, that's pretty, I mean, that's, and you're still that's together. That's not too bad. Yeah, I mean, we don't work all the time. It's it's very sporadic, but when if someone wants us to do a show, we'll do one. Yeah. If we do a new recording project, we'll do a little tour. Uh, but we're more retired than we are, you know, active. It's more of a concept than reality, but when it's a reality, it's really a reality. And it was uh, uh, back in the day when you were doing it, you were doing a lot of touring and a, yes. lot, of, a lot of gigs and... A lot of that had to do with the fact that we were being subsidized by our church who started us. So they paid yeah. for everything, and that enabled us to play all the time without really worrying about expenses. Well, you're like a, an outreach. Yeah. Missionary outreach. Right. But when we went on our own, now I'm completely financially responsible for everything. So I have to pick and choose each project, each tour very carefully. And uh, yeah. so, you know, I balance it between that band and Lost Dogs and myself solo and with the kerosene halo thing. Michael Rowe with 77s, Lost Dogs. And kerosene halo. Kerosene halo. Kerosene halo. 